And uh, I think there are very few academic programs anywhere in the world who can be as proud in the quality and quantity of graduates. Uh, as, as Ellen and Adam mentioned yesterday, we something over 25% of the new hirings in brain sciences in Israel came from this program in the last 10 years or so. And quite a few, I mean, I, I counted five of our graduates of faculty elsewhere in Europe and the US. And many others uh, are leading high tech and education in other fields and many, many other things. So really, I, I think we cannot be more proud and honored with this quality of students and graduates. And, and I think 20 years is long enough to summarize and have some perspective. And we really want to begin with the very beginning, with two of the real pioneers of this program, of this sense of excitement. Moshe Abeles, uh, who not only started this program, but started another one. <laughs> and maybe another one, I don't know, <laughs> after that. And uh, it's really, can be really considered as, as, as at least one of the two fathers of this, of this uh, the ICNC, and, and I think the interdisciplinary brain research in Israel. And Hanoch uh, Gottfried, who will follow him immediately, who really represent the, the other side of the story, the, the physics and, and exact sciences, uh, and who was really <laughs> literally forming the I was there right from the beginning as, as a postdoc already in the 80s and, and then and from the computational side, but I think Moshe and Hanok can tell us a very exciting story. So please, Moshe, have a listen. I did not prepare a PowerPoint because I'm not a physicist like Hanok. And I thought I'll just tell you some stories about the beginning and roll them as they go. And Tali, if I'm carried over, please warn me enough for stories from an old person. So I was in the Department of Physiology in uh, medical school in Odessa. I was, <laughs> I was in the Department of Physiology in the medical school of Odessa and uh, doing electrophysiology with multiple microelectrodes in behaving monkeys. And uh, that was in the 80s. And one day I get an envelope with a manuscript from a physics professor called Danny Amit, where he described uh, some modeling thermodynamics of uh, neural networks. And I started to read it. I didn't understand exactly what's going on, but it looked to me bizarre. You know, two neurons are connected by excitatory synapse. If one is firing, it excites the other one. If it's not firing, it inhibits the other one. <coughs> I said, okay, one, uh, once more, one of these uh, physicists who think that if biologists don't know what they are doing because they cannot write an equation, and if you just uh, describe correctly the system, you can solve everything and understand how the brain works. I didn't go beyond the first two pages, I admit, and I put it in somewhere that I don't know where it is, I'm sorry now. And uh, that is, I went for a sabbatical. When I came back from sabbatic, I found out that uh, the physicist, and mostly Danny Amit, stated, uh, I think once every two weeks, a seminar or journal yeah. club where both uh, <laughs> biologists from Adassa, from bar Ilan, eh, from, sorry, you see my brain, from uh, uh, biology and from uh, physics and computer sciences were coming and discussing issues. And I still remember the first meeting I attended. I came out and I said, oh, this is stupid. How can you think that when a neuron is uh, not firing, you call it minus one, and then it's inhibiting all the, all this, all the neurons that it's connected to. And uh, Danny Lehman took me on the side and told me quietly, it does not matter, we can really we define these parameters and it have been no problem that the neurons are zero or one and if they are zero, they don't do anything. And if they are one, they excite or inhibit and so on. Shortly afterwards, again by the initiative of Danny, 
Hanoch and Chaim Sompolinsky. They announced a year in the School of Advanced Studies in the Hebrew University and asked me to join. I was very hesitating because I had a lab to run and uh, monkey experiments demanded a lot. On one hand, on the other hand, I had Elon and Haggai working and doing much of the practical work in the lab, and I was in the midst of uh, trying to write this book that some of you know, maybe called Econics. I thought, okay, I'll come a couple of days a week to the, this uh, School of Advanced Studies, and I can sit quietly and write. This was, for me, this was a turning point in the, in the topic. I, there have been two processes there that I, I think are worth noting. One is, I understood that uh, although this uh, model of uh, zero one neurons and uh, one, synap one step synaptic delay is, uh, is not brain, not near brain, but still it exhibits properties that I was sure exist in the brain and was unable to formulate what they are. And one of them is a cooperativity behavior of large system. And the other one is the notion of emergent properties that are not in the single neuron or single connections, or few connections between neurons, but about the structure of the entire complex network. I think uh, much of the time there was in the discussing, uh, discussing uh, things that do not fit. For instance, in the early models, a neural network would go into a tractor and all the neurons would fire close to maximal rate possible and some of the neurons and others would be quiet. And I was arguing and showing data that most neurons they fire all kinds of levels and they're very rare to, to see neurons in real behaving monkeys in cortex firing above uh, tens, a few tens of hertz a few tens of spikes per second, and one need to do a, a, some modeling that would account for low firing rate. And it was interesting for me to see that the theoretical physicist would come forth and try to solve this uh, this issue. I, re I, re I rem remind here Daniel Amit again, who had a PhD students from Italy, Alessandro Treves, and his PhD was, how can we make an attractor neural network that fires no, no, it's not. At, at low firing rate when in the attractor. Following uh, this uh, year, or during this year, they and I participated a little, organized a seminar, but Bacheva Bacheva de Rothschild, uh, for the guests, support a, a week or two seminars where people are invited to give a tutorial lecture and then also a scientific lecture so that people can get up to up to form in what they are talking about and there was one organized on neural networks uh, theory and that taught me another sad sad story at that time, the, in the stupidity of our government, a prominent uh, Palestinian uh, politician who was, I think, the most moderate one among the Palestinians understanding the situation, Museva, he was living in East Jerusalem, he went abroad, and the government did not allow him to enter back Israel. Really stupid thing. But uh, our friend and initiator of many of these things, Danny Amit, thought that this is uh, awful, and therefore he wrote letters to all the participants from abroad, do not come to this country because of the behavior of the government. I admit that I was furious that all the efforts would go in vain. I am glad to say that uh, scientists are wiser, and all of them came. And the political issue is a problem, but one should not mix the politics with science. That's my conclusion. In any rate, after that, 
we started again in the initiative of Dania Mit, I think mostly to sit down and see how we can uh, organize a center, research center in computational neuroscience or something of that sort. We do not agree yet on the name. And then I learned that uh, Hannah Parnas, Parnas from uh, biology has an initiative to uh, start uh, brain studies already in the BA level in biology or physics or <laughs> mixed thing. She was supposed to be here and describe her uh, initiative. And uh, we are also very sorry that she could not come because Itzik Parnas is very ill. And on behalf of all of us that know him, I wish him fast and good recovery. But she wrote me what was her perspective on this issue. And what she said is, I had actually a very broad perspective. I thought, you know, to ask me to stand and speak is like to ask me to wave my hands when I speak. This is unnatural. <laughs> so she, she uh, thought that there should be five clusters of interdisciplinary studies already in the early stage of the students. One of them was brain, another of them was biophysics, chemistry, and uh, things of that sort. And uh, I think uh, Hanoch and I picked on the issue of uh, brain. And the three of us went together to the then dean of the, of the life sciences, or exact sciences in, Givat, in then Givat Ram, Otto Lengi, to tell him about this program and what we think should be there and how great it would be if students already from early years would know something in mathematics and not exactly the structure of the 55 little bones in the head of fish. But, but he was very cool. He said, listen, show me where else in the world there is a brain program already in the BA level. And we could not because there was not. So I said, then I, it's, a, it's a no, no. If you want to do something, you can start in the graduate uh, level uh, to do some uh, com mixed things. And with this uh, political failure, we started to, to think how to build a teaching program for brain students in advanced stages, PhD. We didn't think then really about masters, I think. And we started to write a program, what would be the courses, what would be in there. And the summer came. So uh, Chaim, I think, came to me and said, look, are you in the, the US this uh, summer? And I said, yes, I was invited to some workshop. He said, so why don't you come for, to Aspen? We are all there. And we can sit in Aspen and devise precisely the program, what would be the topics, what would be the subject, the curriculum in each topic, how long it would take, and so on. And I said, great, OK. As I like music, to go to Aspen is a good idea. Not for science for me, but for the music there. And we can sit every day for two or three hours and uh, write down the, the program. So I came to Aspen. It seems that what I'm uh, doing there is defaming the physicists. But these are facts of life. I thought, I thought that I always envied biologists that found a strange fish living in the tropical regions or the, the tropical uh, seas of uh, Central America. And then they go on a ship every year for a few months to watch this uh, fish or creature, catch it up, do things like this, while I am sitting there with the uh, monkeys at that time, or cats before that, which are available at the lab. And I, then I learned that theoretical physicists are no better. So they get grants. They pay from the grants to go to work on physics in Aspen, Colorado, <laughs> with the family often, uh, and do all kinds of other things also. But we did sit down also and wrote a, a detailed program both about the center 
and the teaching program. We came to the university very proud. I was sure that the university management would jump out of its uh, skin. And uh, after a lot of deliberation, it was agreed uh, there is a bylaws for the center. I don't think anybody here in the management anymore read them. But there are bylaws to the center. For instance, they said that there would be not more than 18 members in the center. And if there are more than 18, it has to go back to the standing committee of the university for approval. I don't think this was ever done. But papers are for the drawers, I guess, not for, for behaving, in this country at least. So, so we needed money to do something. We have nothing. And Hanoch, through his initiative, in the then existing Horowitz Foundation, found the funding for five years. And, uh, and <coughs> we started to look for somebody who would be willing to manage this, uh, this story. And nobody agreed. And finally, I agreed, being sure that the thing is so fantastic. And it's so obvious that to do something good interdisciplinary, you have to have all the involved people sitting in one place. And not when they want to do something, make an appointment for next Wednesday at 4 o'clock somewhere, but can drop the next door and ask something or show something and so on. That it's so obvious that this would go through without any, without any problem. And I said, OK, I'll start it. But in two years, we'll have a building. And everybody involved would come into the building. And, uh, and we can do the things in the proper way. Now, there will be a building, as, as you know. <laughs> but it took a little bit more than two years. I, at some point, we had a donor, a Swiss guy, who donated the money for research. And he told me, look, my father started his career in Israel. He has uh, the same orchards, orange orchards, all over the the coast area, and I'm ready to sell them. I want a building on his name in every campus. So there's a building on his name in Beersheba, another one in Tel Aviv. And we thought, OK, here is the opportunity to get a building. But the university was not uh, really happy about this. I remember Hanoch, we went together to visit him in Geneva. <coughs> and uh, Hanoch said, building is problematic, but we'll make one floor over the life sciences building for this uh, purpose. And the answer was, no, no, a building. So the guy uh, came every year, he visits Israel, he came again. He went to, to talk then with a fundraiser and so on in the university. And they told him, no, we don't give, want a building. But maybe you can donate a statue for Harat Sufim to put somewhere. <laughs> so he said, Todavadak, thank you, and we didn't show up again ever. <laughs> and, uh, and that's how we had to start in a very modest way. So people uh, praise me for being one of the starters of the program here and the starter of the program in Barilan. I was one of the founders of the Israeli Center of Psychobiology Biology, and managed it for many years. And people don't know that I hate managing. And I'm also very bad at it, but I hate it really. And uh, often I thought that this is a trick <coughs> of the university administration to take a good scientist, that's what I thought about myself, you'll excuse me, to take a good scientist and put him into administration so he wouldn't waste money <laughs> on research. So I'm truly, I know that I'm very bad at this. So I said I agree to do, run it only on one condition, that Aliza would come and help me. I knew Aliza from many years in physiology. I knew her capabilities and personalities. And I think two features, or maybe three, stand up above whatever I have seen anywhere else. One, she cares about the student tremendously, like a real mother for every 
one and one of the students and the old timers can certify this. Two, she has this fantastic quality that some have and some have not. If she leaks the phone to speak with somebody and ask him for something, her voice, and I don't know what is it, it's not a verbal communication, it's something which is in the voice, in the tremor of the voice, in the intonation, I don't know in what, they'll agree. <laughs> and that tremendous, yes. Ah, I thought you want to go to the loop, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was a, a tremendous uh, help for me in earlier stages when I was in physiology, and I thought that would help me. And the third thing, she is devoted. She is working way beyond the uh, eight hours a day, five days a week, to accomplish, uh, to accomplish uh, things. And I thought that's natural, if she wanted, I wanted, that was natural to happen. But there was one guy in Koach uh, Adam, in the men uh, power department, that had some clashes with her in the past, and he did not agree. And that was the only time, I think in many years, that I had to go with Aliza to the uh, general uh, director of the, of the, of the university, uh, what was the name? Bin... Vigdor, right? Thank you. Vigdor, to, to overrule this, uh, this guy and to enable. And since she came, it really, as you all know, the old timers, it's really wrote fantastic with her help, initiative, and per personality. One more thing, if I have half a minute, is I thought that we ought to give the PhD student an opportunity to describe fully their PhD work in advanced stages and have discussions <laughs> informal. So, I thought we have to have a meeting of all the students with lectures only by the students and so on. And we were thinking about uh, several places, and Aliza said maybe in Gedi. And I remember we drove with Aliza, the late husband Noah, and my wife to Engedi one Saturday to see the situation there. And it was really looked good to me. It's not too pompous, it's not. Uh, to alienating small house, small houses in the kibbutz, and I think that was a really a, a right decision. And the fact is that both the current cent meetings of the center and Barilan centers are conducted in Engedi is a proof to that. So thank you. something that I learned here, and I must say it in Hebrew because uh, you don't understand, because we all know that the Basel came with the Binata Yudi, the Aspen came with the ICNC, but it looks uh, good. I don't know what we're doing here other than that, but uh, hello? Okay, after you heard Moshe Abeles, I shall tell you what really happened here 20 years ago. <laughs> uh, he uh, said that he was defaming, that he was defaming physicists. Uh, don't forget that when Lord Rutherford said that all of science is physics and the rest is stamp collecting, he meant biology. <laughs> okay. So you see, uh, I did prepare a presentation and I added the word brief here. Uh, my students, uh, many of them are here in the audience. In the last few years, the first lecture in this course on the theory of neural ne networks are exposed to the history, to the history of ICMC, to the history of neural computation, and uh, there I do it in great detail. Here I should do it very, very briefly. And you can choose any title you wish for this presentation. 
and uh, I, I will need water, so so let me just a brief history of neural <coughs> computation. In the uh, this should be one nine seven. <laughs> <laughs> in this classical, <laughs> okay. in this uh, second edition of this classical book on perceptron by Minsky and and Popper, <coughs> the introduction. There is already an attempt to uh, uh, to outline the history of neural computation, and it goes like that: the 40s, this, the 70s. The genesis is in the 40s uh, with, with the uh, coining of the, of the term neural networks. Then we have the learning neural networks. And I shall not uh, uh, explain the last two terms. But what you, so the first in the 40s, there the are two papers which I shall mention. This is where, this is the Beret sheet, the genesis, where all started. This paper defines the binary neurons and really shows that networks of binary neurons can compute and do everything. And this is the cornerstone of cybernetics, of artificial intelligence. And in the 50s, uh, following the seminal work of Donald Hepp in 1949, the Organization of Behavior, there is another paper in this line which uses these binary neurons neurons to construct learning machines. And Rosenblatt, 1958, <coughs> develops or discovers the perceptron. Now, what happens next? So uh, we are in the 70s, the 80s. The history that Papper and Minsky outlined stopped here. So now we begin. In the 80s, what happens is the invasion of physics. Because what happened until now, there is a binary system. Physicists love such models. They are looking for binary systems. They can treat analytically collections of such binary systems. But there is something more than that. Donald Hepp, uh, one of the principles which you find in his paradigm is that the neurobiological uh, representation or equivalence of any cognitive event <coughs> is a persistent firing matrix. For physicists, this is immediately translated into collective behavior, into emergent property, cast into the language of phase transition, and this is the playground of physicists. <laughs> so this simple binary system, together with this collective behavior property immediately drew attention of physicists. And already in the, in the 50s, there are two physicists to try to make an analogy. But really in the 70s, with the work of Little, who introduced temperature uh, as the representation of synaptic noise and made some very clear analogies with phase transition in magnetic <coughs> systems that this era of physics begins. Daniel, Amit, and myself were uh, really intrigued by this. And we met little. And we started <laughs> to think about these things. But then in the 80s, John Hopfield published his two papers, Model of Content Addressable Memory with a Concept of Energy, Analogy with Spin Glasses. And when we saw that, Daniel and myself, we immediately knew what, what has to be done next. And what has to be done next is to bring Heinz and Polinsky into the picture. <laughs> and that was maybe the most clever move that we initiated then. And we met. And as I said yesterday, this was love from first sight. There was chemistry. And it took a few more years. And Heinz was then a young, bright, a scholar at bar -Ilan University, just came back from his uh, postdoctoral work. He came to the Hebrew University. I could say the rest is history, but I will tell you the history. <laughs> so in that middle 80s, the three of us produced, 
We had a lot of fun in those years when we produced these, uh, these papers. Uh, and based on this understanding, some biologists at this time said, or oh, this misunderstanding, but this is again goes back to these, to these debates that we had. We spent some time at Aspen, <coughs> as you heard. We spent time at the Institute for Advanced Studies, actually the Advanced Institute for Physics in Santa Barbara. And we had this idea of setting up a whole year uh, at our Institute for Advanced Studies at the Hebrew University. And this is a year where we really brought together Moshe Abeles and his students, a few other biologists, psychophysicists, psychologists, uh, people from, from, from abroad, and we developed a language. And there is something else that happened during that year, which is important to mention. In addition to this, we had a bright young woman who was with us at that institute. Her name is Elizabeth Wagner. <coughs> and she contributed something very important, very seminal to this computational neuroscience because she succeeded to apply the same concepts of statistical mechanics of disordered system to study the, dyna the dynamics <coughs> of the coupling parameters of the synapses, of the learning process. And I mention her specifically, I always mention her. We, at that time, did not know, she was a young woman, 30 years old, we did not know that she was struggling with an advanced stage of breast cancer, and a few months after she left us, she died. So this is uh, what happened during, during that year. So again, based on this understanding, this was our paradigm. And I painted this. I used blue here because this is the blue brain of the physicist. The mathematical representation of the blue brain of the physicist in those days. So you have a blue box, not a black box. And it has a dynamical system which has two sets of dynamical parameters. This could be binary parameters, this could be firing rates, this could be anything that describes the, <coughs> the, the state of each, of each neuron. This is fast dynamic, this is slow dynamic, the JIJ, the synapsis. <coughs> you see there is, there is a stimulus. That stimulus, uh, I mean that two things, it activates the process <coughs> of that stimulus through these parameters. But at the same time, it also affects and modifies the JIJs, which is the learning dynamics. And until today, until today, when we teach, uh, myself and Haim, we teach the theory of neural networks. I teach <coughs> neural networks one. Haim teaches neural networks two. In neural networks one, the main emphasis is on this dynamics. Neural networks two, the main emphasis is on that type of dynamics. And as I said, uh, for physicists, for biologists, this is an offending simplified picture, except for one, Moshe Abeles. Moshe Abeles is a very, was already then until today, a very unique type of a biologist. Even before we came on the arena, he realized that in order to understand process in the brain, you have to take a system approach. He did not maybe use the word collective behavior in those days, but what he did with his synfire chain model is exactly that. So this was a very, a very good match. And we were fortunate that right here at the Hebrew University, he was here and so were his students. And there was something, so, uh, so the next phase, when we talk about the 90s in this history is ICNC. Because there we already knew that that is what we want. And Moshe described to you something of that. There was something <coughs> else in those days. <coughs> uh, 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 Moshe had a, f had a friend. <laughs> by 
Valentino, he's no longer with us, Valentino Breitenberg, a noted neuroanatomist. And he uh, published what is called a brain manifesto. The wording of that manifesto, the contents was offending to biologists, was like music to our ears because he spoke exactly the same language that ultimately everything will be explained in the language of physics and mathematics and in that manifesto that is all you have to know yeah is is this a special and temporal resolution and today wouldn't say that we wouldn't say that but to say uh, worrying about what every molecule does uh, does not help you to understand may even obscure the picture and uh, the most, you know, the brightest, uh, that the brain is a complex special temporal affair, perhaps describable as a, that's all you have to know. So that was, the, that was a reductionism that even we physicists never dared to, uh, to do. So with that, uh, in 1992, we established finally ICNC, and this is the poster, and the idea here is that we bring together together the five, uh, five different disciplines. And I remember in those days, uh, uh, Moshe picturesquely described how we uh, designed uh, the curriculum, but we also produced reports and papers. Then we did not yet have all the graphic uh, capacities of today, so it's all black and white, and uh, here is a computation neuroscience. This was our manifesto for computation neuroscience. What are the fundamental questions? What will be the core courses? The idea would be that there would be five mandatory courses. Uh, and these are the, the disciplines. And to give it a, some graphic, <coughs> graphic presentation, you can read the fundamental questions that we then uh, expressed our ambition to, to answer and to resolve. And here are the different groups, uh, what, what we are doing. But then we produced such graphical representations of our ambitions. All the, uh, around that in the outer circle are all the disciplines, the methods, the topics, and finally, the final reward is both understanding how the brain works, but also emulating this function in brain-like computers, namely artificial intelligence. And since today we are, we are celebrating an anniversary, it's a birthday, so when we cast it already then in the form of a birthday cake. So you see, so here are all the disciplines <laughs> that come together, and here are the different topics. And, at the, and the chair <coughs> is, is the reward that we shall understand how brain works and what happens. So this is ICS. And here you have the, the scholars. These are the first members of ICNC. So you see here, I will talk, so not everybody is with us. Yesterday, we had an evening devoted to the memory of Shlomo Bendy. And you see the times Heinz dirt is still very black. Look at him today. Yeah. And the uh, and, uh, <coughs> dispensive mode of, of, of the chairman of LSEC, you can see here Jan Bagai, uh, Daniel Amit. Uh, uh, unfortunately, then only one woman. Yeah. Today, fortunately, <coughs> there are a number, a few more. Uh, who else is here? Uh, you see uh, Hochstein, Shaul Hochstein here. So we, we will we will celebrate we will celebrate uh, on Wednesday 40 years with with Shaul. So remember, 20 of those 40 he was with us. <laughs> and uh, and you see uh, Tali uh, Kishbi here. And then. Uh, uh, so the first director, this you've said already, uh, on that I agree with everything that Moshe said. 
He was the first director. He was reluctant. He, he made a thing. He does not, he lacks, what he lacks is self-confidence. He was a great director. And it was very, we were very fortunate that he agreed to be director in the fostering years of this, of this program. And it is true, he had two demands. He conditions before he agreed. One was, was a building, and he already said that finally we can meet this demand, but what was more important, the other demand was Arisa. <laughs> and here she is. Uh, where is Arisa? Is she here? I am here. Ah, Arisa, yes. And really, as he said, I have to add that one cannot exaggerate in, in pointing out her importance in gluing it all together, in making it something very, very coherent. So now we have ICNC. This was the 90s. So now we move to the next decade. So what is the development in the 20s? So in the 20s, I think, without question, these are the ICNC students. And they are already beginning to make their mark on our, on this discipline, and today is a day that is devoted to make this visible to everybody. So these are the ICNC students, and here you can see uh, many of them. This is going out uh, from Engedi to the uh, traditional annual hike that we all do together. And so this is the, the 2000s, and the next decade, the next decade, that is what we are celebrating today. So this hopefully will make its mark. And here we bring everything together. We bring this discipline of computation neuroscience, which is the discipline towards it, which, the emergence of which uh, we here, with the students, with the faculty, contributed quite a lot. And yesterday, uh, I heard at the talk by uh, Leon Duell that at the same time, there was another paradigmat paradigmatic development in this field, and that is the emergence <coughs> of cognitive neuroscience. <coughs> now within LG, computation neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience and everything else that is related will come into one framework. I'm very happy that the Treshwar Committee acknowledged the importance of computation neuroscience as an element that should be there to stay. And personally, uh, myself, uh, I look back at those uh, years of genesis, 20 years back with nostalgia, but today, I look with pride at what our students and my younger colleagues have accomplished and to what heights they have taken this project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hanok, for uh, this really exciting uh, history. And uh, I'm sorry I left, I had an interview on the radio. And you can